What's going on everybody? This is Island Hopper TV and today we are going to talk about the things to know when visiting Turks and Caicos. Let's do it. So the first thing we're going to touch on is these beautiful beaches. As you can see right here near Grace Bay, that's where I'm standing, white sand blue translucent water that kind of changes colors as you go further out uh, you can really just snorkel all around those reefs or wade in the water waist high and you'll see all sorts of different uh, turtles there's a lot of turtles here but the thing you want to know is about the beaches grace bay which is the area that we're looking at here because it's a bay but there's several beaches up and down here considered the best in the world Okay, you can look it up. Several publications have said Grace Bay, number one in the world. So what is it about it? Well, it's this gentle, translucent blue water that meets this white, soft sand, the sun, occasional clouds, really nice, set up, safe, all that. So this is what makes Turks and Caicos, in particular, Providenciales, so sought after. Let's talk about the next thing. Okay, next up, let's talk about accommodation. So, you can see right here in front of me, we have a hotel resort. There's many resorts on here. I think the premier one is going to be the Ritz-Carlton. This one's Wide Mara. But you can see they've got umbrellas and all that. So for accommodation, you'll find Airbnb. You'll find some boutique hotels which are more like motels. Uh, I've found the cheapest here for an Airbnb was about $125, no, $150 per night, but you have to pay cleaning costs, two different cleaning costs, so it basically doubles the price, puts it at over around $300 for an Airbnb. The most affordable accommodation that I did find was actually a hotel called Lodgings, right near the airport. It's not the most ideal place to be, but it works. I think they're a partner with Best Western. But another thing I would like to also point out is that you have some really ritzy areas. I mean, celebrities come here like Drake, Lil Durk. I mean, Prince had a house over here. So if you're in need of some nice, luxurious accommodation, you will be able to find that here. Anyways. You can see all up and down Grace Bay here, lots of accommodation. There's also Zapadillo. They have accommodation on that side of the island, but definitely the leeward side or Grace Bay is where most of the accommodation is. So let's talk about the next thing. All right, next up, let's actually talk about some general facts or things to know. There's 40 islands out here. So uh, you have the Caicos Islands, which are South Caicos. Middle Caicos, North Caicos, and Providenciales. Uh, a few smaller ones like Pine K and Parrot K. Now the Turks Islands, Grand Turk is the main one, and Salt K. Another thing that you'll want to know is that it's a British territory. So of all those 40 islands, about eight of them are inhabited. So plenty of virgin islands out here in the Turks and Caicos. Uh, their president or their leader in the government is a prime minister. Like I said, they're a commonwealth of the British. So as the British do, so does Turks and Caicos. Drive on the other side of the road. Some would call it the wrong side of the road or the British side of the road. But I did notice that some of the cars have steering wheels on both sides. So, you know, it just depends on the vehicle you get at the rental place. You want to ask what side is the steering wheel on. Uh, but if you're not used to driving on the opposite side of the road when you get a rental car You might want to ask those questions or do a little bit of research, but I'm telling you right now They drive on the other side of the road. Okay But the steering column can be in either seat depending on the vehicle Like I said, they also transact in US dollars We'll talk about money here in a second a little bit more All right for this one. Let's talk about food so there's lots of beachfront, oceanfront dining available on this island. Here's a look at a conch soup, which was followed up by a T-bone steak and mashed potatoes, so your typical meal. 
and then the good old fashioned conch ceviche, followed by some Caribbean rice and jerk chicken. And let's not forget about cocktails. There's so many, but rum punch seems to be the big ticket out here. Now they do have pina coladas and the sort, but it always seemed like I went back to that conch ceviche or seafood at the end of the day. This restaurant you're looking at here is actually at Coral Gardens Reef. It's called Somewhere Cafe and Lounge. And for me, this is the place that I would like to recommend to you guys. It had good food, good cocktails, good people, and beautiful beach setting right here at the Coral Reef. Welcome everyone to Turks and Caicos. Yeah, this is what they there. This is the spot to be? Yeah. Coral Garden? Coral Garden. Number one. Number one. <laughs> so on this one, let's talk transportation. So we're going to talk about arriving in Turks and Caicos, in Providenciales, but also what you need to know about getting around the island when you actually get here. So there is a ferry. This is on the leeward side of Providenciales, and it takes you to several of the other Caicos Islands and I'll show you right here transportation if you're gonna book a rental car make sure you do that well in advance because they are booked out at least a week and a half here it is in uh, March spring break time frame also if you do choose to not get a Hertz rental car like that one as a Hertz it says on the back or ace or any of these other local uh, rental cars you're gonna pay for a taxi cab and man, it's about 15 to $20 just to go on a short trip around Turks and Caicos. For those of you who are coming out here thinking about transportation, yes, they have a ferry boat. Yes, it does take you around. Yes, they have an inter-island Turks and Caicos airline that can take you to places like Grand Turk or some of the other islands. But man, it's expensive getting around here if you don't have a rental car. So if you're gonna be here for more than two days, I do recommend a rental car because it will add up. Uh, one of the other workarounds for rental cars or transportation is just staying at a place right there in Grace Bay on the beach. That probably will make things a lot more efficient. Uh, then you only have to pay for getting around every once in a while in a taxi. It's usually per person, it's not per ride. So also keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, there is no real Uber or Lyft efficient system. Now when it comes to landing at the airport, let's talk about that. So getting into Turks and Caicos, especially right now, yes, you need to present a negative test. You know what I'm talking about, PCR antigen. Next, you're also going to need to fill out a document online about your, with your information saying that you are fully vaccinated and that you also have the necessary information about the negative test uh, before you get here, they will ask you at the airport of your departure city and they will also ask you when you get here to show those documents. Uh, if you don't have those documents at the departure city, they're not going to let you get on that plane. Also, you have to have an outbound ticket. You can't just do a one-way stay for as many days as you want and then just whenever you're ready to leave. You have to actually have a departure ticket and you also have to have insurance. You have to have traveler's insurance. That's really important. Now, when you're on the plane, they're gonna have you fill out three different documents, okay? One for the uh, Ministry of Health, one for the Ministry, I believe, of Tourism, and then I think it's something like agriculture or how much do you claim to bring in. So there's a lot of documents that are required to visit Turks and Caicos. Once you get here, everything's smooth. You're not gonna be asked for anything like that. You have to basically wear your mask when you're at the airport, but once you get away from the airport, it loosens up. Technically, you should wear it when you're in a taxi or the taxi driver is going to wear it, but those are just some other things to consider. Okay, let's talk about weather and climate in Turks and Caicos. So there's a few things that you're gonna to wanna to know when you come out here. And that's going to include hurricane season. That basically starts in June and doesn't really officially stop until November. Uh, right now, the weather in March, since I've been here during spring break, has been around uh, 80 degrees, I would say, on average. Uh, breezy, cool nights, cool mornings, kind of warms up in the day, not too brutal. But once May comes around, till about September, it is hot in Turks and Caicos, but uh, the climate overall, it is tropical. 
not too far away from Miami. Uh, in fact, it's about 400 miles away from Miami and kind of close to Cuba. All right, next up, let's talk about safety and crime because I know this is important for many of you. So let's talk about it. So obviously as a male, I have a different experience than a woman who would say come here single or with a group of women. Uh, from my experience as a man, I would say that Turks and Caicos across the Grace Bay area in particular is safe. Now there are some areas in the middle of the island where you might get an Airbnb. It's safe, but you know they do put gates up for a reason. And compared to some of the other islands in the Caribbean, Turks and Caicos does have relatively low crime. The times you might get yourself in trouble is late night at clubs, uh, getting carried away. But in the daytime, there's no real incidents. Now, one of the things that I would say is a little bit concerning is the way they drive on the roads. So uh, you notice that sometimes they don't, <laughs> you know, drive in between the lines, they pass, they do some real squirrely stuff. So if you do rent a car and you're driving through the main highway that goes through the middle, uh, I think it's called Grace Bay Road. It's not that it's dangerous, it's just I have seen some wild drivers on there. And also, sometimes off the beaten path, I see speeding. Other than that though, safety in Turks and Caicos is not something that you're gonna need to uh, be too concerned about. Uh, in terms of health care, I have seen some health care offices. Hopefully nothing bad happens here, but if it did, something you can do to protect yourself get that insurance that I think they make it mandatory I don't know if they're always gonna make it mandatory but if you're really worried about it just get travelers insurance so overall safety you know take basic precautions as you would anywhere else I would say it's probably even safer than say Miami Beach or something like that oh there's no real animals that you have to worry about haven't seen or heard about any sharks in the water not saying they're not there but lots of turtles and where there's turtles, there might be some sharks, maybe some bullheads, or some tigers. Other than that, maybe some other lemon sharks or something. Nothing else really too concerned about. Uh, maybe some jellyfish, but I haven't seen or heard anything like that. Or stingrays, I did hear about eagle rays. Eagle rays are the cute stingray looking characters. Anyway, we got a sunset going on. Let's see. And I want to put out some general information that you guys should know when you visit. It's about 575 miles from Miami. It takes about one hour and 45 minutes to get there. They say 31,000 residents on the Turks and Caicos Islands. One million tourists per year, mostly from cruise ships. So I think they said in 2019, they got around 1.3 million. That was the most they ever got. 800,000 of those came from a cruise ship. Now, they do speak English on the island, although I did hear dialects in French and Spanish because you get people uh, from Haiti, which speaks French, or Dominican Republic, or Cuba, or some of the other places around the Caribbean that speak Spanish. Uh, tipping, typically 15%. We already talked about many other things related to arrival, but let's talk about the departure now that I've actually completed that. There are two additional forms, contact tracing, that the U.S. has added. So do check on departure if you need to fill out any additional forms. Thanks everyone for watching, and we will see you guys on the next one.